Okay, we're now at the drop, so now let's get this car off the bed. Let me get my, set my brake, we'll turn my PTO on. There it goes. And again, hopefully you get in the habit of listening to your PTO and you can hear it on and off so that you'll know you don't want to ever drive with the PTO in. It'll tear things up, it'll blow transmissions apart. So always listen for that so that you know when the PTO is engaged and not engaged. Again, for me, steps first, I'm going to roll the bed back, get it back to my alignment angle. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you can't modify these, but I am telling you that if you get yourself in the habit of doing it at the same time every way, it becomes a habit. And once you do it this way, you know, 40 or 50 times, you'll be used to it and you won't make any unnecessary mistakes. So, okay, we're going to start. We're going to take this one off. And again, I like to tilt the bed before I take anything off so that that way there's some the pressure on the front chain that holds it on the bed, but I'm not all the way off. So we'll start by getting this off again, just like always, I'm putting everything back because I'm ready for the next toe. Go ahead and get this one off. Again, I like taking the two back ones off before I get it down on the ground. So this is the one side. Again, I put this back religiously every time because I'm getting ready for my next toe. There we go. We're ready for that. Let's go around to the other side. take the front one off because to me it's a safety until I get this on the bed on the ground get it off the bed I don't want it up in the air in case there's a failure of some type whether it be the winch or you know accidents have happened this has got my safety until I'm on the ground and ready to take this thing off the bed Got it just barely on the ground. We'll take off our last safety. Last securement strap here. I refer to it as a safety because that's what it is. It's keeping it safely on the bed in, in case there was a, a failure of some type that you just never know what it's going to be. Again, I got it down and we're ready to go. So Now going off the bed, it'll do... Uh, It'll do real well till it gets down to the concrete. Once it gets down to the concrete, the resistance on that block in the concrete, it'll stop moving. And sometimes we get lucky and we're on blacktop and it might do it this time, but a lot of times it'll get all the way to the end of the bed and you'll have to jack it up in order to get it to come off the rest of the way. You'll pull your bed out. I say pull your bed out, but hydraulically you work your levers and uh, keep it tilted down. See, it's done just exactly what I told you it would do. It stops short of coming off the bed. So we can do a couple things here. I think the I think the easiest way to do this is once it's off. I never put the tire back on. Once I get there, usually never. Uh, I usually ask them for a block of wood or a jack stand because it's not going to go anywhere. So from uh, this point, we're going to go ahead and uh, disconnect our chains, and then we'll just kind of we'll pull this bed out from underneath it. I'm not going to put the. I'm not going to take this thing out of park. It's on the ball joint block. It stopped, so it's obviously not going to roll anywhere. Now, if you were on a hill or something or offloading on an incline or something, it might be a little bit different. You might have to... But even if you were loading on an unloading on an incline with a broken ball joint, especially on a front-wheel drive car, 
um, it's not going to set there so you would absolutely have to set the emergency brake well i am tied up here there we go you'd absolutely have to set the emergency brake or chalk the wheels so in this scenario we're going to tilt the bed a little harder which means we're going to lift it up a little bit we're slowly going to pull this out Pull this chain out from underneath this thing just a little bit. And if that's freaking out a customer or something, what you can do, and you'll have nicer cars if, if where the chain is getting right on that lower balance panel, all you got to do to correct that is come over here and increase the clearance. It's that simple. So make certain we're on the subframe there and again what we're doing is jacking it up just a little bit to increase the clearance we're now clear of it go ahead and slide our bed out can see when I was even there I'm six foot one I couldn't even reach the wire rope that's the reason I'm always encouraging you to always put it on the corners different guys will hook in these pockets but I've been doing this for 28 years and when you hook into the pockets every day it wears the pockets out um, it just creates a lot of stress on them and stretches the holes out and, I have to use a rollback for as many toes as I like to use them for. They uh, they wear them pockets out, but if you're over the edge, it's not going to wear anything out. It's going to be there. So that completes the toe on showing you how to load a car with a broken ball joint. Maybe the tires come off and it's lost all of its lug nuts and they're broke off. This works for both of those situations really well. You've seen, you'll watch the video times, this doesn't take that long and I was talking and trying to tell you how to do it the whole time. So a little bit of practice and you guys can come get to where this is nice smooth operation for you when you're out there on the side of the road, you're not going to be intimidated by it. So until next time, we'll catch you again.